How do you handle a difficult situation in life? Life invariably throws at us challenges where we have ups and then sometimes we go through disappointments and bitter experiences, sicknesses in life. Do you get stressed, anxious, afraid and do you panic because of this or do you trust in the Lord? Well, I want to bring to you a message which is a very common factor the people speak about it when people go through a difficulty and somebody goes through a difficulty it is a commonly used word and the scripture speaks about this couple of words that I'm going to preach right from Genesis all the way to Revelation you can find this theme coming up you talk to a Bible teacher or a Bible preacher and a counselor, you are in difficulty, you go to a counselor, Christian counselor, these are the words that comes out of such people's mouth. And when we pray, when we find a friend who is going through difficulty, we often use these words to encourage the other person. My question is, do we really mean those words? And what are those words? Even in testimonies, I have heard people telling me these words. And I want to bring to a message entitled, Trust in the Lord. Now, we commonly use these words, but do we really mean what we are speaking? This is a very simple statement, but a very profound statement, and sometimes very difficult to follow and obey, trusting in the Lord. Well, open with me your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 3, and it's verse 5 and 6. Proverbs chapter 3, and it's verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. So what to do when things are not going well for you? What to do when the world is going through a difficult time? We just have one answer, trust in the Lord. We are facing difficulties in the world uh, post the COVID-19 pandemic. Death and the fear of death people being affected with uh, the COVID-19 pandemic is very large in this country that we are living in and around the world. And what do we do during these times? We have only one answer. We can just trust in the arms of the Lord because my God is in absolute control over every situation and even the situations of the world. When people die, insurance cannot save them. Good insurance policies can replace accident cars, broken houses, and bankrupt companies. But no insurance policy can replace the loss of life or special positions or irreplaceable losses of valuable lives that are lost because of the pandemic. And we live in a time when we have no idea what the future holds for us. We do not know what is coming tomorrow and there may be loss tomorrow, there may be gain tomorrow and all loss is painful and gain is joy. But through it all, we are brought back to this Proverbs chapter 3 which says, trust in the Lord. Amen? We do not know what our future holds, but we know that God is constant and so we will trust in the Lord. Come with me back again to Proverbs chapter 3 and it's verse 5 and 6. Listen to it very carefully. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Look at that word. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your ways. Trust in the Lord. That's what uh, the Bible says. Do you know that Charles Spurgeon was an amazing preacher that the world has seen? He has preached some amazing messages. But Charles Spurgeon's grandfather happens also to be a preacher. And he was a very poor preacher and he had hardly any money to live by. And he would not leave his preaching ministry. He will not stop preaching to take up a special job to support for his own livelihood. What he had is he had a cow that would give him milk. James Spurgeon had a cow that would supply milk for him to live and to sell. And then he went about preaching. 
One fine day, his wife came and told him, the cow that used to support us died and there is no way we can move forward. James Spurgeon decided that he will not stop preaching. And uh, he said, let us trust in the Lord and God will provide. Tomorrow is in the hands of God. Let us trust in the Lord. You know what happened back in London? They were doing a collection for missions that day. And they decided with all the collections, they will send it to needy pastors. And they designated all the money and all the pastors had been supplied. And they came up with an excess of five pounds. And somebody said, let us give it to James Spurgeon. Maybe he's also preaching the gospel. He's in some need. And they decided, now that we are sending it to James Spurgeon, he's a wonderful preacher and we have been so blessed by him. Let us not send five pounds. Let us collect some more money and send him. And at the end of the day, they collected around 20 pounds and it reached James Spurgeon. Can you imagine the work of God? On one side, his wife is telling, the cow has died and there is no way we can live. But on the other side, as this man of God trusted God in his difficult times, God opened supernatural doors and God provided for the servant of God. You can trust God to keep his promises and provide for your needs. I have tasted that in my life. There have been times when I did not know what tomorrow will hold for me. And when we have trusted God, God supernaturally provided for me and my family. We have a problem with trusting God because of several factors of this world. The reason we are not trusting God is because we are relying on many other things rather than putting our trust in God. I was just thinking to myself, what are the things that keeps me away from trusting God? And you can introspect your lives based on the list that I'm going to give you. Why are we not able to trust God the way we can trust God? You know, Jesus said, do not worry about the lily or the sparrows. I will provide for you. And very clearly the Bible said, do not be anxious. Do not be worried. I have seek first the kingdom of God and all these things, whatever you need, food, clothing will be provided for you. That's the promise of Jesus to us. But why are we not able to trust God? Why are we getting anxious? Why are we getting worried? Reason number one is that we are far too self-sufficient. We feel that our own resources, our own education, our own abilities can bail us out of difficult circumstances. While God has given you abilities and resources, praise God for that, but our trust is not in our abilities and resources. Our true trust is in the Lord who will never fail us. My dear child of God, thank God for the GPS. Today with a GPS, you can avoid a traffic jam. You know, when, when you see that there's a traffic jam, the GPS will redirect you and you can avoid traffic jam. But major lessons in life cannot be avoided by our intellect. Major lessons of Bible that God wants to teach us cannot be avoided by our smartness. We need to endure those times and we are not sufficient and we got to trust God during those times and tell God, I know that I don't know everything. You are all sufficient and I will trust you. So number one reason why people do not trust God is because they are too far too self-sufficient. Secondly, uh, we are too quick to call on other people. We are too quick to seek help from other people. As life progresses, we have good friends, friends in good position and friends in political lines and friends with a lot of money. And what do we do when we are stuck with a situation? Instead of trusting God, instead of calling the heavenly dial, we call human people and ask for human solutions. And that is the reason why we cannot trust God. We know that if we have a health problem, this is the person to dial. If we have a financial problem, this is the person to dial. But we must know that beyond every human help, there is help in the presence of God. And when you trust in the Lord, He will give you the right help that is needed for us. This morning, beyond every connections that we have, we need to trust in the Lord. Amen. And thirdly, we don't trust in the Lord because sometimes we feel we are far away from God. We feel so distant from God. We feel that God is a God in heaven and he's not concerned about the things of this world. While you cannot see God, you can experience God. 
God is right over here. When you are going through struggle, he is right in your hospital bed. When you are going through loneliness, he is right beside you. He is with us. And Jesus said to his disciples, I am with you always to the very end of the age. But many times we don't realize that and we feel distant and far from God in our troubles. And that's what even the servant of God, David, felt. You know, when he faced opposition in chapter 13 of Psalm, and it was one, David said, How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? In other words, David also has his time where he felt he was far from God and God was not listening to him. God was not concerned about his situations and we feel far from God. And let me remind you, God is close to the brokenhearted. When you go through a situation, when you feel that you are all alone and how can you handle this difficulty? My God is right beside you. Trust in the Lord and he will make a way where there is no way in your life. Amen? And the fourth reason why we don't trust in the Lord is because we worry a lot. We are worry a lot and it is natural fallen tendency that we worry, man worry. And think about it. Is your prayer list bigger or your worry list bigger? Many times our worry list is far bigger than our prayer list. Now if you trust in the Lord, our worry list will be next to minimal and we will not worry about anything. Yes, I know that there are worrying circumstances. There are circumstances that can make me anxious. There are circumstances that can make me afraid. But I'm not looking at those circumstances. As a child of God, I will put my trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Now I put together some things that uh, reveal how little we trust God. There are certain things that I want to bring to you that reveal to us our true heart condition and tells us how little we trust God. First of all, when you choose to worry, you do not trust God. Today you can either worry or you can have faith to know that God is in control over your situations. So when you choose to worry, you do not trust God. When you fix what is impossible, you do not trust God. When you hurry ahead and don't wait for the Lord to move and change you, you don't trust God. When you lie awake, twisting and turning at night, you don't trust God. When we don't get sleep and we are worried about what our tomorrow will bring, that simply tells to us that we don't trust God. When you doubt biblical principles and promises that are in the Bible, you don't trust God. When you go to others first for help, you do not trust God. When you listen to human counsel and give higher priority for human counsel than the principles in the Bible you have just learned, you do not trust God. When you manipulate and maneuver situations by your own might, you do not trust God. When you step in and take charge of things in your life without praying and being led by the Spirit of God, you do not trust God. When you cling to others in order to feel secure, you do not trust God. When you want to be loved by others than by God, you do not trust God. And the list can go on and on and on in our lives. You see how easy it is for us to live in the flesh and to disobey trusting God. And if we are a child of God, trusting God is the number one principle that by which we can have a good and successful Christian life. What are the things that are keeping you away from trusting God? What are those things that has come into your life that is keeping you away from truly trusting in God? Amen? Remember, God called Abraham. And when God called Abraham, God told him that I'm going to make a nation out of you. I'm going to give you a child. I'm going to give you a land. And what did Abraham do? He just trusted God and walked out, not knowing where his destination is going to be. Not knowing who will provide for him. Not knowing who will take care of him. Not knowing what his future is tomorrow. And such a person, God blessed and fulfilled his promises. Tomorrow is in the hands of God and we need to trust ourselves in the hands of God. There was once a party time in the Bible. All his brothers and everybody were meeting together in a house and they were all partying. The eldest brother in the house throws a big party and he invites all his brothers and sisters, come over to my house. Let us party. Let us have fun. And they had a God-fearing father. Every time after the party, 
uh, the father would do a sacrifice thinking that in that party somehow my children would have sinned and in one such party we can find that while they were having a good time together when everybody was joined there was a great feast lots of fun and lots of laughter but suddenly when everybody was feasting something happens a mighty wind comes in and strikes the four corners of the house the house collapses of them and all these children die everything happens just in a moment can you imagine the scene suddenly the party scene is shifted and is become the scene of a cemetery there are deaths of people almost entire family except the parents have died and the news reaches the ears of job and can you imagine how the father would have felt job would have felt when his children died and that's not all the fire burnt his sheep in chapter in verse 16 and we can find that the chaldeans raided his camels most of his servants were killed job's body has boils and he's rejected by his wife the wife said you curse god and you die and his friends come to console job but they all come and accuse job in his pain but what did job do Job said in Job chapter 13 and this verse 15, Though he slay me, yet I will hope in him. And the King James Version translated so beautifully, Though he slay me, yet I will trust in him. And that was the trust of the man of God. Are you able to trust God like a Job? Are you able to trust God like an Abraham when he took the child to the Moriah to offer him as a living sacrifice? He knew that he could trust God and God's promises no matter what the situation in his life. And today, God is calling us to trust him no matter what situations we are going through in our life. What do you do to trust God? How practically we trust God and what are the things that I must do so that I can trust God. Come with me uh, to 1 Samuel chapter 30. 1 Samuel and it's chapter 30. All of you open your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 30. I'm going to stick on that and conclude the message. 1 Samuel chapter 30 is a time when David is going through a very difficult situation in his life. And do you know that David the shepherd boy was summoned by King Saul to play harp for him in the palace. And Saul was so pleased with David because now David is so popular after uh, slaying Goliath. Everybody knows about David and now he's playing harp in the palace and uh, Saul feel comforted. His spirit is lifted up because the evil spirit has departed from him. And Saul gives him a place in the military. He gives him a place in the Israel army. But very soon, Saul is moved with jealousy against David and he chases after David for his life. So Saul is so much of e eaten with envy and jealousy and mistakenly thinks that David is trying to steal his throne. So he started chasing, trying for a way to assassinate David. David, afraid for his life with his few men, he ran away from the palace of King Saul and he even went all the way to the enemy camp, Philistine camp. Can you imagine? He killed their head Goliath. And now to find refuge, where is he ended up? He has ended up in the Philistine camp and they accepted him and they gave David and his men a place called Ziklag for a couple of years to stay. And David was staying over there and now what is David doing? He is allying with the Philistines and is fighting for uh, Philistines against other countries. And now it came to a position that the Philistines and the Israel army are coming for a battle. And David aligns with Philistines, goes all the way, three days distance to the battle, allying with Philistines to go and fight with Israel. But suddenly as they are in the battle lines, the battle is going on, the counselors of the Philistine king said, see, David is a Hebrew, his men are all Hebrews, what if they turn against us in the battle and they also fight against us, we will be destroyed. So the Philistines came up with a strategy and told David and his men, in this battle against your own people, you don't have to come. You just turn back and go to your place and rest. We will win the battle and come back. So David and his men, around 600 people were with David, fighting men. 
all armed people, people with strength to fight battles, they have gone to the Philistine camp. Probably they battled a couple of days and they're tired, they're weary, they're sweaty. They walk three days from the battlefield and comes all the way to their hometown to take some rest, to have some delicious meal, to see their wives and children and to spend some time of rest. But as David and his men were tired coming after three days of walk, all they could see from far was smoke rising from the town of Ziklag. And they were concerned. Come with me to 1 Samuel chapter 30 and it's verse 1 to 3. David and his men reached Ziklag on the third day. Now the Amalekites had raided Nagev and Ziklag. Can you imagine what happened when David and his men with the Philistines went to fight the Israelites? Another enemy, Amalekites have come from another direction and has raided the camp where David's wives and the soldiers' wives are camping. So that's what. Now the Amalekites had raided Nagev and Ziklag. They had attacked Ziklag and burnt it. Verse 2, and had taken captive the women and everyone else in it, both young and old. They killed none of them, but carried them off as they went on their way. When David and his men reached Ziklag, they found it destroyed by fire, and their wives and sons and daughters taken captives. Perhaps you have had days like that in your life where days where the sun refused to shine, days where you thought that it is all over. Can you imagine David seeing smoke from his camp where his family is residing, runs to the camp to see what is happening and they find only smoke and rubble and dust and ashes. Children are not to be seen. Wives are not to be seen. And can you imagine what would have been the first thought? Our children are killed. Our wives are killed. And all my place, what I thought was security, it is all in ashes and dust and I have no hope for tomorrow. Sun set on the life of David. He thought that everything is over. And uh, listen now, when he thought that everything is getting worse, things are getting even worse for the life of David. See the response of David. 1 Samuel chapter 30 and his verse 4. Read it very carefully. 1 Samuel chapter 30 and his verse 4. So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. He could not weep. He was crying and he cried in such a way that there is no more strength left to weep. Have you come across situations like that? You're so filled with grief and tears that you don't have any more tears to weep. Never think that trusting God means that you do not weep. We are not to tell we people who weep, don't weep, everything will be okay. In pain, I have gone through situations where I have sat and wept. Sometimes I have seen people weeping because of the loss of their loved ones and I have sat and wept with them. We weep, but we don't weep like the world, we weep with hope. We grieve. We don't grieve like the world. We grieve with hope that there is everything renewal coming at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because of the resurrection, there is hope in our weeping. Can I hear an amen, church? Amen. I cannot experience loss without tears. If you haven't heard a gospel that you come to Christianity and everything will be okay, that is not the right gospel. We will face every type of challenges that the worldly people are facing. Every type of sicknesses we will also have to face. Okay? If it is God's will for us, we will face. We will go through every challenges. The world go through a financial recession. We will also face a financial recession. The world is suffering with corona pandemic. Sometimes our people can be infected with the corona pandemic. So when we weep, we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Things got worse for David in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 5 to 6. So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength to weep. David's two wives had been captured. Ahinoam of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel, verse 6. David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. 
and each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters look at that word david was greatly distressed if i am not pulling the meaning of the hebrew word too long it also has a meaning of great depression no it gives us a meaning that david went into so much of distress that he almost went into depression why his wives have been captured his children have been captured and even the wives of his troops have been captured now 600 men who are supporting david and telling that david we will stand with you no matter what they are turning against david and taking stones to throw at david and they're asking david you were not wise you took this decision did you never think that you should protect our families now we have lost our wives and we have lost our children and his own people uh, came and stood against david sometimes we go through situations like that we are in great distress situations of loss situations of death situations where our own people will question our intentions our own people will stand against us once they stood with us but they will stand against us and talk against us and make us the scapegoat what did david do he dipped greatly into depression but david was a man of god in the next verse for samuel chapter 30 verse 6 but david found strength in the lord his god Look at that courage of David. He knew that when he could not depend on anybody, there was no but not even one person to comfort David, but he found strength in his God, the Lord. Amen. Today you may feel that there is nobody to encourage you. You would have felt that everybody has abandoned you. Nobody want to come even near me, but you can find strength in the name of our Lord. He is omnipresent. He's present where man cannot come. If you are affecting with coronavirus, you are put into an isolation ward and people cannot come near you, but there is no distance for God. He is there right where you are, my dear friend. David encouraged and strengthened himself in the Lord. The amplified version of the Holy Bible says, "Today you may go through situations, you may go through pain. You do not know what is your tomorrow, but you can encourage and strengthen yourselves in the Lord of hosts, the Lord Almighty." And that's the God that we serve. David lost his wives, he thought. He lost his children, he thought. Now he thought that he lost his people who are supporting him. and on one side Saul is coming and attacking him and he found strength in the presence of God you may be all alone there may not be anybody to stand by you but today you can find strength in the presence of the almighty God maybe he remembered the psalm uh, chapter 27 verse 1 and 3 what david wrote the lord is my light and my salvation whom shall i fear the lord is the stronghold of my life of whom shall i be afraid when the wicked advance against me to devour me it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall though an army besides me my heart will not fear though war break against me even then i will be confident maybe david remembered the psalm that he penned no wonder paul talks in the same line writing a prayer to the ephesian church in ephesians chapter 3 paul says and is verse 16 i pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being when we are weak we have the power of god by the power of the holy spirit in our inner being we don't have to go anywhere god gives us power to endure difficulties in our life in ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 paul says finally be strong in the lord and in his mighty power My dear child of God, you cannot find strength in the world, you cannot find hope in the world, but we can have hope and strength in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and they are saved. Amen. So how did David find encouragement? He just went to the presence of God and he not only did that, he inquired of the lord 
Okay, come to 1 Samuel and chapter 30 and this verse 7 and 8. David said to Abiathar the priest, the son of Ahimelech, what is David telling there? Bring me the ephod. Ephod is a garment worn by the priest. Okay? And there are many times where David uh, also in the previous time has worn an ephod and worshipped the Lord. Right? And ephod has instruments in it where you, can, you are guided according to the Old Testament principles to inquire of the Lord. Okay? You go and read about ephod. And what are the stones over there? Okay? And David said, bring me that ephod. He's inquiring of the Lord. Abiathar brought it to him and David inquired of the Lord. He put on that ephod probably or he uh, inquired of the Lord with that ephod. Shall I pursue the raiding party? Shall I go after the Amalekites and bring back our family? Will I overtake them? Pursue them? He answered, you will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. What did David do? He did not go to ordinary people. When he was in a distress, when he was in pain, when he was rejected, when he went through depression, what did David do? He inquired of the Lord and the Lord gave him counsel. Go two chapters back, 1 Samuel chapter 28. You can find another man, King Saul. Okay, go and read that passage. We have time this week. Read chapter 28 and read chapter 30 and see the response of Saul, how he is trying to inquire of the Lord and how David is trying to inquire of the Lord. In chapter 28, uh, Saul was always directed to God by Samuel the prophet, right? He always went to Samuel the prophet and the prophet would direct Saul in his life. But in chapter 28, Samuel the prophet has died. And the Lord stopped speaking to Saul. Why? Because he had rejected Saul as the king over Israel. Saul went to a witch, a demon-possessed witch. And that witch brought in with her power the spirit of Samuel and he recognized it as the spirit of Samuel. Go and read that passage. But this is not Samuel. That is an evil spirit. To know what God wants him to do, he went to a wrong place. And the witch directed him to go to the battle. And that was the end of Saul. He and his sons got killed. Why? Because he inquired at the wrong place. My dear child of God, look at what David did. He inquired at the right place. He inquired of the Lord. He went after the Amalekites. And he brought back the plunder. He brought back his wives and, and the family that the Amalekites have raided. Look at Abraham. When Lot was captured, what did he do? He went after it and he plundered and brought back. Today, if you inquire of the Lord, you will be given the right direction in the presence of God. Human beings cannot direct us. People cannot direct us. God can direct us. And sometimes God can direct us through wise human beings. Come with me to Psalm 119, verse 143. Trouble and distress have come upon me, but your commands give me delight. Look at the word of the psalmist. When I go through trouble, when I go through distress, where do I find direction? How do I inquire of the Lord? The commands of the Lord, the ways of the Lord, the scripture is my delight. The scripture guides me and directs me in my pain. God wants to direct you and that direction is found in the word of God. In Psalm chapter 1 and this verse 1, the psalmist says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Look at Saul and David. The counsel of the wicked, it ended in death. And look at David. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of the mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Can I hear an amen, church? David encouraged himself in the Lord. David inquired of the Lord. And God heard his cry. God gave him back his wives and children. And God definitely made David the king over Israel. Today, whom do you trust? Come back with me to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. That's where we started. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. 
in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight with all your heart with all your ways trust the lord and that's what the bible is teaching us i was just going through this life uh, biography of one of the finest missionaries the world has seen and i was so moved how he could overcome the distress in his life just by trusting god i'm talking about adoniram and ann judson adoniram judson are the first missionary couples or the pastoral couples who left the united states the shore of united states to go to a distant country they come all the way after the marriage in 1812 they come all the way to india and they are baptized by william carey and after being baptized by william carey they get the commission for the gospel and they felt in the heart the calling uh, to go to burma or myanmar and share the gospel where there is no christians at all there is no gospel that has reached myanmar in 1822 and judson his wife was forced to return for america for medical support and that time they had to take the ships and months together in the ocean they have to come back to the us for medical support no nearby hospitals in 1824 and reentered burma and she and her husband locate to uh, a capital city called uh, awa and their daughter is born maria is born look at the story okay in 1826 ann judson passes away uh, and at the age of 37 this lady passed away his beloved wife passed away he could have asked lord i have given my life over to you in this foreign country to talk my language to know my culture i have only my wife but my own wife has passed away why did it happen to me his own wife passed away and the same year his daughter only daughter maria passes away in 1827 adoniram judson relocated to the jungle to maulmain burma so he kept on traveling in different places of myanmar and started ministering and teaching the gospel and preaching the good news of the gospel in 1828 he begins ministering to the karen tribe in myanmar and in 1834 the mission gets him married to sara brodman this is his second marriage and they have eight children in this marriage okay in 1837 god used him to baptize 1144 burmese people are baptized in water they are the disciples of jesus and the fruits of his ministry over there and he translates the entire bible from english to burmese look at the mission the work that he has done in the midst of his difficulties in the midst of loneliness and pain and death that came into his life in 1837 he translates the entire bible into burmese but in 1845 his second wife sara passes away looking for medical attention and is buried again disappointment set into his life and in 1846 judson returns to burma with his third wife it was very difficult to minister without having a family over there so the mission got him married again and sent him uh, with a third wife back to burma to continue the ministry in the lord a man of god who was the first missionary to sail out of the shores of the united states of america they continued the mission and the work for christ they started a printing press they started a school they made an english burmese dictionary and all of a sudden judson fell ill and he needed medical treatment for his sickness no hospitals in india or any hospitals in burma was sufficient so they had to take him in a ship to all the way to england which was the nearest hospital that was able to meet his medical need and as he was traveling in the ship through the bay of bengal judson breathed his last and they had to bury him in the watery graves of the bay of bengal and later in his biography it is written it was only trusting god that he could do what he did for the kingdom of god and i want to tell you we need to trust god no matter what situations we come across in our lives 